let's talk about amyloid PET in terms of image interpretation and quantification. First of all, to clarify the significance of amyloid PET, I will explain amyloid cascade hypothesis in Alzheimer's disease. In familiar Alzheimer's disease, missense mutations in the amyloid precursor protein or presnil in one or two genes induce increased relative amyloid SS42 production throughout life. On the other hand, in sporadic Alzheimer's disease failure of amyloid SS clearance mechanisms induce gradually rising amyloid SS42 levels in the brain. These increases of amyloid SS levels cause amyloid accumulation and oligomerization in limbic and association cortices of the brain. Amyloid SS oligomers exert subtle effects on synapses. Then amyloid SS oligomers gradually deposit as diffuse plaques. Microglial and astrocytic activation and attendant inflammatory response occur followed by altered neuronal ionic homeostasis and oxidative injury. These changes cause neuronal dysfunction with transmitter deficits, while altered kinase and phosphatase activity induces deposition of neurofibrillary tangles. Thus increased amyloid SS level eventually leads to the onset of dementia. Amyloid deposition observed in amyloid PET is a prerequisite for Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and leads to early diagnosis. 5 PET tracers, carbon 11 PIB, fluorine 18 phlogtapia, fluorine 18 flotin tamyl, fluorine 18 phlogtabin, and fluorine 18 NAV4694 are currently available. Dose, waiting time, and imaging time are recommended for each tracer. Waiting and imaging times vary from tracer to tracer, ranging from 30 to 120 minutes and 10 to 30 minutes respectively. Recommended method of imaging display is listed for three PET tracers. For fluorine 18 phlogtapia, inverse gray scale with white background, for flutine tamil rainbow or sokolov color scale, for phlogtabin and gray scale with black background are recommended. For display condition for flutine tamil, Pons count is recommended to set at 90% maximum. Amyloid PET interpretation is based on visual reading of positive or negative findings. Non-specific white matter accumulation is regarded as a negative finding. Gray matter accumulation in five regions of interest, posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus, frontal cortex, temporal cortex, parietal cortex, and striatum is regarded as a positive finding. Amyloid negative and positive findings in carbon-11 PIB PET at the cerebellar level. Cerebellar medulla shows high accumulation in both negative and positive cases. On the other hand, cerebellar cortex shows very low accumulation in both negative and positive cases. At the PONS level. PONS shows high accumulation due to the high white matter content in both negative and positive cases. Diffuse accumulation in cerebral white matter is observed without any accumulation in cerebral cortex in a negative case. Temporal cortex shows high accumulation in a positive case. High accumulation is observed in ethmoid sinus, sagittal sinus, and cavernous sinus in a negative case. Midbrain level. Frontal and temporal cortices show high accumulation in a positive case. On the other hand, Hippocampus shows low accumulation in a positive case. Basal ganglia level. In a negative case. Internal capsule and corpus callosum show high accumulation. On the other hand, striatum shows low accumulation. Globus pallidus shows higher accumulation than striatum because of higher white matter content. In a positive case, high accumulation is observed in frontal and temporal cortices, and striatum. Occipital cortex shows relatively low accumulation. Lateral ventricular body level. Posterior cingulate gyrus shows high accumulation in a positive case. Centrum semival level. Procuneus and parietal cortex shows high accumulation in a positive case. Pericentral sulcus area shows relatively low accumulation. Midsagittal section. In a positive case, High accumulation is observed in medial frontal cortex and posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus. Parisagittal section. Anteroventral striatum shows high accumulation in a positive case. Coronal section. Hippocampus shows low accumulation in a positive case. Amyloid negative and positive findings in fluorine 18 flotin tamil pet. 
high accumulation is observed in posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus and medial frontal cortex in a positive case. Parietal cortex, temporal cortex, and striatum shows high accumulation in a positive case. Striatal accumulation locates mainly in anteroventral part of striatum including nucleus accumbens. To summarize positive finding of amyloid PET, high accumulation is observed in posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus, frontal cortex, temporoparietal cortex, and striatum. Striatal accumulation is more pronounced in familial Alzheimer's disease. Low accumulation in pericentral sulcus area, occipital lobe, and hippocampus. Cerebellar cortex shows lowest accumulation. In visual reading of amyloid PET, lower concordance in fluorine 18 labeled traces than that in carbon 11 PIB. In an amyloid positive case, gray matter over white matter accumulation ratio is lower in fluorine 18 labeled traces than that in carbon 11 PIB. This low contrast makes assessment of mild gray matter accumulation difficult. To help visual reading of amyloid PET, quantification of amyloid PET is proposed. Standardized uptake value ratio, SUVR, which is the ratio of specific accumulation over nonspecific accumulation has been conventionally used. On the other hand, centeloid scale is newer indicating stage of amyloid accumulation calculated on the basis of carbon-11 PIB PET from zero obtained from negative cases in young control subjects to 100 obtained from positive cases in elderly Alzheimer's disease patients. Centeloid scale simplifies and expedites direct comparison of amyloid's PET results across sites and studies, outlines the earliest thresholds for amyloid positivity and define the range of positivity in Alzheimer's disease, robustly quantifies longitudinal changes, and facilitates inter-tracer comparisons. You can see the difference between centeloid scale 0 and 100 amyloid PET images. In a centeloid scale 0 image, you cannot see any accumulation in gray matter. When estimating centeloid scale, you have to follow the method put forward by the Global Alzheimer's Association Interactive Network. The subject PET is co-registered to the co-registered subject MRI. Next, the co-registered subject MRI is warped into Montreal Neurological Institute space. The parameters of the deformation field in this warping are applied to the co-registered subject PET for anatomic standardization. The SUVR is calculated from standardized subject PET counts in a reference region and in the global cortical target region. Finally, the SUVR is converted to centeloid scale values using direct conversion equations for each PET tracer. Four reference regions, whole cerebellum, cerebellar gray macca, pons, and whole cerebellum plus brain stem, and a target region in cerebral cortex and striatum are shown for estimation of centeloid scale as volumes of interest. Of these four reference regions, whole cerebellum is recommended due to the smallest variance and the largest effect size. Unlike the SUVR, the centeloid scale is a universal 100 level quantitative value that is independent of choice of a reference area. Unlike the SUVR, the centeloid scale is a universal 100-level quantitative value that is independent of used PET tracers. Case groups with negative and positive carbon-11 PIB PET by visual interpretation are shown with centroid scale. In sporadic Alzheimer's disease, amyloid accumulation begins in the posterior cingulate gyrus, procuneus and frontal lobes, spreads to the temporal and parietal cortex, and finally to the striatum. Cases in the upper 10s to 20s on the centroid scale are not shown, but many cases in this range are experienced with confusing positive and negative visual interpretation. What is the optimal cutoff value for determining whether a patient is amyloid positive or negative on the centroid scale? A number of studies have been conducted in this regard. Studies comparing anti-mortal amyloid PET with post-mortal neuropathology findings suggest that a centroid scale of 10 or less does not show senile plaque, thus ruling out Alzheimer's disease. A centroid scale between 12 and 20 shows a medium to high frequency of senile plaque in the SARAD classification, while a centroid scale of 24 or higher shows a medium to high level of Alzheimer's disease pathology. 
a score of 26 or higher is in good agreement with visual assessment, and a score of 50 or higher correlates most strongly with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. The gray zone for visual assessment is between 12 and 30 on the centroid scale, the range in which amyloid SS can be detected at the earliest stage. It is believed that a skilled reader can determine a positive result even at 16 to 17 by visual interpretation. In terms of disease progression, 19 is reported to be the cutoff for a reliable worsening of the rate of change on the centroid scale, and 26 is the optimal predictor of progression to dementia after 6 years of PET. To calculate the centroid scale of amyloid PET, one has to run statistical parametric mapping on MATLAB and perform a lot of processing. Several software packages have been published to perform this series of processes accurately and effortlessly. Here we present Amarant. This software is compatible with the five currently used amyloid PET tracers. It automatically calculates the centroid scale. It performs anatomic standardization of PET for centroid scale calculation using MRI or CT of PET CT. It also displays a Z-score map compared to a database consisting of amyloid negative young healthy subjects. Here are the output results. SUVR and centeloid scale are calculated. Z-score maps compared to a database consisting of amyloid negative young healthy subjects are shown in brain surface and tomographic images. Futem Tamil pet of a visually obvious negative case is shown here. The centroid scale is zero. The target VOE is indicated by a white line in the tomogram of the Z-score map. Regions with a Z-score of 2 or higher are shown in color, but are not included in this target VOE. Flutim Tamil pet of a visually obvious positive case is shown here. The centroid scale is 104. Flutim Tamil pet of unequivocal case by visual interpretation is shown here. No focally increased accumulation is present. However somewhat diffuse increase of cortical accumulation is present. The centroid scale is 23. Posterior cingulate gyrus and procunius and medial frontal cortex shows significantly increased accumulation in a Z-score map. This case may be diagnosed as amyloid positive. Carbon 11 PIB PET of another equivocal case by visual interpretation is shown here. Right frontal cortex seems to show somewhat increased accumulation. The centroid scale is 19. Frontal cortex and posterior cingulate gyrus show significantly increased accumulation in a Z-score map. This case may be also diagnosed as amyloid positive. To become proficient in the evaluation of amyloid PET, combined use of visual read and quantitative assessments using centeloid scale and Z-score mapping is useful. Thanks for your attention.